Hello, Lisa. Hello, Listen, hello. how are you? We're hey. so delighted you could make it. Um, and uh, we're just uh, filling in the crowd here for our little Roots Tech Minute. 15 minutes with Lisa Listen from the uh, Roots Tech Show uh, in Salt Lake City, ready to talk about how I ponga. We're so yeah. excited. And uh, we know this is just a Roots Tech Minute. And it's a little drama to get here, but uh, just a little, <laughs> just a little. Shall we uh, go? I'm going to step out to hide my video, um, and we're going to let you go. How about that? You ready? Sure, sure. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Barbara, for having me. This is a lot of fun to do. So, thank you. You're always such a welcome guest. Here we go. All right. Perfect. So guys, I want to show you how I use Panga and how I use it in my research because I find it, I, t I treat photographs as record sources. I analyze them just like I would any other record source that I pull up. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to take you over to, to my Panga library, gallery, my library actually, and show you. So let me grab that real quick. Share screen. All right. Hang on, guys. Give me just one moment. I need to make sure it's up because it's okay. Let me see if this will do it. We've had some fun technical challenges, but Barbara and I always prevail when it's the secret right is that Lisa is actually a hacker. <laughs> that is so not amazing. true. Amazing. <laughs> hacker is, so is a good true. term. <laughs> there we go. All right, Barbara, are you seeing? Right, I am. My, my library. So I want to take you through three of my photos that I use that I, and show you kind of an example of what I do with a photograph with Panga. And because I mean, Panga is about is about the stories and sharing, but it's also I use it as, like I said, a research tool and what I can do with it. So I'm going to start with this photograph right here in the middle. It's a log cabin. Now, the one of the things I love about photographs is that when I inherited all these boxes and boxes of photographs, I I get a number of things that look like this. Well, I think if it were you and I on a cell phone today, we'd probably just delete it and move on. But I was like, why is this photograph? They kept it. I don't know what they were taking a photograph of unless somebody was trying to take a photograph of that dog. And so I don't know. But what this is, and I did know this, is that this is, I'm going to turn on my little select areas and show you. This is the log cabin. You can see it's a very typical style for Virginia. This is South Central Virginia, Halifax County, Virginia. And this is very typical, but this is the house, believe it or not, that my, my father was born in. So I highlighted that. And then when I click it, I actually have, I make notes about it. So as a researcher, as a genealogy researcher, I'm looking at this and it's telling me, first off, without even thinking through the process too much, it's giving me some socioeconomic information about my dad's family when he was born. So I'm looking at that. Obviously they like dogs and they had chickens. So but I made a note on here. This is the log cabin. This is I'm, I make a note of where it's located. So I know um, where it was located. It was on Old Cluster Springs Road near South Boston, Virginia. And I make a note of it that this is a very typical style of log cabin. It's also kind of typical of their tobacco barns, which is looks different than in the area of North Carolina where I live. So it's, it, it tells me something about that place. Now, another thing I, I wanted to look at when I looked at this cabin, and I did know, I was fortunate, and my dad was able to talk me through the photograph some. I wanna show you where it is literally on the map. Now, I just highlighted it, the ground down here to take me there. And what I did is I had gone over to, let me see if I can make that bigger. For some reason, it doesn't. Let's see here. Hang on. Control plus. Or there we go. Got it. So what this did is I've got a um, Google map, a satellite view, and I was literally able to put them on the map. That house is still there today. And this, so I've got that. This is actually my father's grandfather's house. So this was also family property. And both of these houses are still there today. So I thought that was really cool to be able to see that. I know which road it is. I know where on the road. So I literally put them on the map. All right, let me back this down. So that to me, I mean, whoops. All right, hang on. All right. And, oh, control zero. Control zero. Control zero. Control zero. Ah, oh, thank you. I didn't know that tip. All right. 
And let me just widen this out. Make this one a little bit, come back down. Okay, so that's what I can do with that. And I think it's just a fabulous way of getting that perspective of what's around there. And you, if you notice, there was a lot of farm, I'm, I saw a lot of farmland around that, that's still, this is still farmland today. Now there's a really interesting thing here. So I got this tree and I didn't think about this tree at all, but my dad is the one who started telling me stories. And I'm like, I got a picture of this tree. So when you click on it, this is a black walnut tree. Now, did I know that was a black walnut tree looking at it? Absolutely not. I don't know if anybody would, but my dad's like, oh, that's the tree. And so what he tells me is the story about black walnuts. Now, they are not like the traditional English walnuts that like we would go to the grocery store and buy, you know, for our, our cakes and cookies and all that kind of stuff. These are black walnut trees and they are hard, they fall and they're black and they lay on the ground and they wait till it, um, they just basically cure on the ground where they dry this husk and then the husk will roll off and you can get the walnut out. And those things are big too. Um, and so they, once they do that, then they literally, you have to take a hammer and just crack those things. And of course, little boys love to do that because you can hit something with a hammer. So he was telling me the story. I was like, this is so cool. He used to, he said they used to keep them out in the shed. And then when his mother was making pies, they'd send them out to the shed to, to hit the walnut, you know, crack walnuts with a hammer. He said that was, it was great. It was like having your own grocery store in the backyard for these black walnuts. And so I wanted to know a little bit more about those black walnuts. So I wrote that story down, but then I was like, I need to know a little bit more about these things. Here's what they look like. It's gonna take us over. And I found an article about black walnuts. Again, very different. And they, it will go on and talk to us about harvesting and how they harvest them. And I'm not gonna let that page load because I am on a Wi-Fi. I'm not at home, obviously, and the Wi-Fi is, it's a little taxing for it. So that would be what I would do. The other thing was, I noticed this just really before coming on with you guys, is there is, I found what looked like maybe another building in the back. I had not actually noticed that. And that is one thing I do is I like to come back frequently or periodically in review because I start to pick up things I hadn't seen before. And so I made a note over here that, oh, wow, this looks like another house or maybe a building or for, on, a, on the farm. And so I thought, I just made a note that I need to ask him or to share that out with him through the Ponga system. I haven't, I just did it so just this morning. So I haven't had a chance to follow up on that type of piece. So this is what I'm looking at. No people, but what does this tell me? It tells me, you know, it tells me about my dad's early life, my grandparents, what kind of house they had, it tells me, you know, fun stories, but also, you know, what they ate. And I love culinary heritage, guys. Um, I put them on place and map. I'm looking at this land. I'm looking at this terrain. I know that they were farmers and I'm seeing that bearing out in the terrain that I'm looking at. And for some reason, they always had dogs too. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to the library. I'm gonna show you another one that I use. It's coming, coming. And now this is one, it's a little bit different, a different way to use one. So this is, let me let it come up. There we go. Okay, so this photograph, and let me, I just wanna make it just a little bit larger for you guys to see. And let me navigate here. Doo -doo -doo. Look down a little bit. So this is not necessarily the best quality photograph. I, I can't say that my ancestors were actually um, gifted photographers, shall we say? <laughs> That's okay. Neither am I. Um, but I'm so, so thankful that they actually took photographs. So the woman on the right is my great, great grandmother. And then that is her her granddaughter next to her. I think she's holding a cat from the best I can tell. So what I found interesting in this photograph, the first off, when I have photographs like this, again, not the best quality of a photograph, but it tells me a little bit about them. And what I'm looking at in photographs like this are things like face shape. So I made a little note here. So the first thing in the first note, I actually just identified her, her you know, she's Harriet or Hattie Elliot. And I'm looking at the face shape. And the reason I'm looking at this is that I have a large number of photographs and I don't know who they all are. I suspect most of them are family. Some might just be friends, but I'm suspecting and these are early. And so I don't always know which side of the family. I don't know if it's on Patty's side of the family, or if it's a Patty's husband's side of the family or my grandfather's side of the family. So I'm not a hundred percent sure. So when I lay them out, I'll lay, I will 
lay all those photographs out and I start looking. And what I came to realize is I started, didn't even realize I was grouping photographs by facial shapes. And Pongo lets me do this digitally and really kind of get the stories a little bit better. And I start to recognize family groups. So I, some of the photographs I have, while I don't know who they are, I can tell you that's part of the Elliott family. That's part of the, because I see this features that just show up um, consistently. Um, and I see it a little bit in her granddaughter. This is actually her granddaughter, Elma. I do see some of that roundness in her face that um, I see, I've seen it in other pictures as well. Now, one of the interesting things here, when I analyze this and I'm, I'm looking at this, trying to date it, you know, and I'm looking at this young girl. So looking at Elma, I know that this was probably taken around 1925, 24, 20, uh, excuse me, 24 to 25, when that was the year that she lost her mother. And then a year later, she lost two of her siblings. Hattie took care of the children a lot. And so I was like, that helps me to date this particular photograph, looking at her age as well. And then another really interesting thing that I find here that I love is look at this. And let me see, I just want to um, move it up just a wee bit for you guys here. There we go. So Hattie and Elma are out there feeding the chickens, right? So she's feeding the chickens. And I noticed something. Hattie is holding the chicken feed bowl in the right hand and feeding the chickens with her left. She's left-handed. And I had to sit and think about it. And, and I, know this, I know there's a possibility that she's not, but I wouldn't do it that way. I would hold the feed in my left hand and feed them with my right hand throwing them out because my non-dominant hand is typically, I call it my worker hand because it's stronger because that's the thing I hold and stabilize things with. And, you know, I use my right hand to do things like writing and throwing. Well, I don't throw chicken feed, but if I did, I throw it with my right hand. So I thought that was so cool. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's left-handed. Well, it turns out when I talk to a, another family member, um, we have left-handers in the family. I am not, but she's like, well, yes. And her daughter was left-handed as well. And we have this little quirky, you know, we have left-handers, South Paul's, I guess, in the family. I, does it really get me further down the road to geneal, you know, in genealogy aspects? No, but it's a lot of fun to know that. I think <laughs> it's just another piece of the puzzle and gives me a little insight. So who knew you can actually determine if your ancestor is right-handed or left-handed. And so, um, and I did confirm her daughter was left-handed because I have a photograph somewhere of her writing with her left hand. Uh -huh. So I made a note of that. So going back, let me show you one more photograph um, that we have. Um, here we go. And that's this one. She can see I have a lot of photographs, but let's see. It's come. So this one is actually a home place. And as you can tell, this one is not necessarily in the <clears throat> best shape. This photograph, oops, let me. There we go. Um, this this photograph is not in the best of shape, as you can tell. It's got, you know, it was torn, it was ripped and damaged, but it's still a very precious photograph, I think. Um, and it was obviously a posed photograph. So this is my Maddox family here. And one of the first things, I definitely looked at the people first, but I'll show you what I did first. I usually do. And this is what I do. So I forget sometimes, Barbara, I'm sorry, I forget to hit that navigation button. <laughs> extra boxes <laughs> come on come on there we go just grab the yeah yeah so here we go so i hit that button this is the maddox home place and this is in lee county north carolina i've been fortunate enough people i, I have relatives who've put it on the map for me and um the first thing i did was head over to find it on google maps and i'll tell you what my internet's where i am here i'm from the hotel it's a little sluggish i won't hit that google button but I added it so I can look at it on the map. So that's a really cool, cool thing to be able to do with that. And then the other thing that I'm noticing here, let me navigate away from that, is that just looking at it, let me make it a tad bit smaller. Looking at the house in general, that's a good size house. At some point, somebody had, there was some means there. This family at this time actually didn't have a lot um, in the way of, of monetary things but looking at the house at one point they did 
And so I'm looking at that. I'm, you know, it's got a night. The roof is in good shape. The chimney looks really nice over there. So that's a, a good thing as well. So that's sort of what I'm looking at with that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to look at, I'm going to enlarge it one more time and I'm going to um, raise it up so you can see some of these other boxes here is this. So this man and son, this is my great grandfather holding my grandfather. So I was able to date this to about 1916 because of my grandfather's birth date and the age of the baby. So I was, that's a, a great way. This again, it is baby identifiers. a pardon baby identifiers, baby <laughs> identifiers. Isn't that great? And so I can go through and identify each one of these individuals here with that. Now, another thing, so this is, this was always really fun. Really fuzzy picture, but this is Martha Jane Lett. This was my, this turned out to be my great, great grandmother. And I actually have, I realized even just today, looking at her dress one more time going, I have a photograph of her in that same dress on a taken, I think it might've been even taken the same day. So they had obviously hired a photographer to come out and, and do some stuff with her there. But I'm looking at the women here as, as well. Now, one of the things that I noticed, and I actually haven't even marked him yet, let me take this off for a second. I want to see if I can. Okay, I want to get this guy right here. Okay, so if we look at Barbara, is it a way to hide one of these so I can get a better look at this one? Or do I just uh, take them all off? When, when you hide it, <clears throat> go ahead and hit hide. The, okay. Right. Oh, and that good. will remain selected and you can, you know, zoom in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just I didn't want to do too. Much. So it's a, a bit of a fuzzy thing, but this guy, this is Thomas. So I would what I would do looking at this is this is Thomas. So he is a cousin or he's the brother of my great grandmother. And I highlighted in here. So Thomas Mattis, he died. I would write in here that he died. I'm going to just say as a young man. I, a I have his date somewhere. I just don't have it in my hand as a young man. And then what I would see here is I'm looking at his posture. Now, some of you may not know, but I am a former physical therapist. So I actually analyze people's posture in these photographs. And, you know, we've got Connie right here holding Lester and he's got a more relaxed posture. We've got the other guy right here. I think this is Lawton holding, you know, kind of a loop, you know, just normal every day. Even the women, they're a little more, they're relaxed, but they, there's a, a relaxedness, relaxed they are relaxed. Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, their arms are either down on their sides, at their back, you know. But when I look at Thomas and haven't heard a piece of oral history that huh, Thomas had some special needs that, um, and I don't know what they were. I just know that he was, he probably would fall on this, uh, on it, on either um, he might have been autistic or he might have just um, had some learning disabilities. We're not 100% sure, but his posture is different. It's very stationary, very one dimensional to me. And that's it. That's a just a PT thing coming here. But it, but it just tells me a little bit more about him. So I'm looking at postures. I can sometimes pick up arthritis. If, if I were to go over here and look at Martha Jane there, we can see um, what I noticed with her is she's kind of favoring that left side. So it tells me, obviously, she's advanced in years looking at her, but it also probably tells me that she's got some significant um maybe some hip issues that are bothering her, causing her posture to be a little bit off to one side. So that's just the PT and me kind of looking at that, but it tells me a little bit more about her and maybe, you know, some of her challenges later in life. So let me check her. Oh, oh, Barbara, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. Um, let me, so let me come back. Um, so, but the point here the, is the details. So I'm looking for the details Definitely to make my stories richer, as Kathy said in the chat there. Definitely, Kathy. Look, I want to make those stories richer. Um, but I also want to make sure I am not missing out on clues that could benefit me further down the road. You know, black walnuts may, they enrich that story, but then they also, you know, gave that story of the house. And the house looking at that gave me a clue was I actually know where it was. So it if you know, if all I had was that picture to go on, who owned it, you know, where it was on the map, then I can go off and start looking for land records or, you know, looking at, obviously they were farmers, looking at a little bit more of the farming type things going on in Virginia at that time period. So it does allow me to kind of get into not just the headspace of my ancestors, but the visual, their visual field of 
that they're looking at. And that's really important, I think, as researchers. We're gonna miss, we're gonna miss out on breaking down brick walls if we're not really seeing what our ancestors saw and experiencing what our ancestors saw. But that's a whole nother topic, just saying. <laughs> Lisa, this has been a fabulous, fabulous first inaugural How I Ponga session. Oh, thank you. I think this is start, this is gonna be a series. And we obviously always welcome our membership to take your lead and really build on this idea of looking deeply, deeply into mm -hmm. pictures and leveraging what you do know, going out to research like the black walnut, going out to research what you can know because the internet knows a lot of stuff. Some of what yes, you can yes. trust, some of what you can't <laughs> trust. And uh, bring in the expertise that you yourself had, the PT mm -hmm. perspective to see how someone's standing and favoring and mm -hmm. those kinds of details. And then go look up the records, the maybe medical records or other kinds of things that you might find evidence of. That's just brilliant. I know I'm certainly inspired and I know our membership will be as well and their guests, our whole Punga community. Thank you so Thank much you. for doing this. And um, I love that we can keep this nice and tight. Um, are there any other questions out there from all of you joining us today? Oh, I'm so glad you guys learned a lot. Thank you. I think we'll hold this as this precious little nugget that it is, a precious little walnut of stories <laughs> and uh, take up further discussion in uh, future events and dialogue that we can have um, online. We'll be capturing this as a recording and sharing it out to all of you who have attended today and bringing it in uh, perhaps after the show uh, into our uh, courses section of our Aponga Academy. Again, thank you all so much. You'll find more Aponga content over on our website, uh, website booth at ponga.com. Roots Tech, surprisingly, and also, of course, connected in through the uh, uh, directory as an exhibitor, uh, virtual exhibitor here during the Roots Tech show. Again, thank you so, so much. And reach out with questions. We'll be in our Ponga booth, which you get to from ponga.com Roots Tech. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.